Hey, welcome to episode 108 of Scar Bearers. I'm Chris D.T. Gordon. I am so happy that you're here today. And you know who's also happy? Nate and Britton Barron. No, you can't see them. They're not, they're not a couple of the Ninja Turtles. They're not up there with Weird Al. Nope. They are here in an ethereal sense, making sure that this show, this podcast looks at and sounds as good as it can. So please show them some love. Go to at Nate Barron to do that. Now, folks, I want this message of the, you know, the Attitude of Gratitude and the Scar Bears podcast and all these great inspiring stories to be spread out to people. And the best way you can do that is to subscribe, share, like, all that good stuff. Now, I know that some people, they'll, they'll get on you, they'll have the hard sell. Hey, why don't you show some class and subscribe and all that? You know, that's not me. I'm a, I'm a nudger. So I'm going to ask you to slightly nudge that button to the subscribe if you haven't done so. So you can hear the messages of my guests and share them with others so we can just increase create an inspiring and motivating atmosphere because that's going to help people become what they can with this positivity and this love basically because we're all here about love we love doing what we do and we do it because we love and speaking of love i'm joined by a not not as much of an old friend but this is the first time we're actually going to chat sarah willoughby how are you sarah I am awesome. It's really great to be here. So thank you for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure entirely. Now, I know that you have a bit of an accent. Uh, so you are, I'm going to guess you're from Boston, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Of course, <laughs> of course. Yeah, no, I'm originally from the UK, but I live in Melbourne, Australia. So I've been here since 2009. So I have a bit of a mixture of accents, which confuses people. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, being from a bunch of different places, it kind of throws people off when they have an ear for accents. So do you do you consider yourself an Aussie or a, uh, a, a I guess a Brit or an Englander or what's the term they use there? Uh, well, I have dual nationality citizenship. So I consider Melbourne to be my, you know, forever home I guess I'm, I'm not planning to leave here but mm -hmm. I will always be English um, mm -hmm. because that's my heritage that's where all my family are I lived there for the first 30 years of my life so okay. I have a love for both countries excellent yeah I yeah, I've never lived in another country but I I'd hail from the state of Michigan if you're not familiar that's the one that's shaped like a mitten and <laughs> and so I live now in Minnesota but my heart you know my my Heart is always in Michigan, yeah, even though I do like it here in Minnesota. So I, I understand where you're coming from. Now, you and I are both connected because we are both speakers and we have messages to share, but those messages come from vastly different places. And my audience knows my story, but I would love it if you could share yours. Okay, sure. So, as I've just mentioned, I grew up in the UK. I spent six years at university studying, working hard, worked my way up the corporate ladder in corporate HR, which I did for 10 years. I got there. I felt slightly unfulfilled. We were constantly putting a Band-Aid over people's problems and issues and then moving that problem and that person on. So we weren't getting to the root cause of people's concerns whether it was personal or professional or both at the same time I was going on this journey through secondary infertility so I already had my son and I was wanting to complete my family and that journey led me on a journey to self-love actually which I didn't realize at the time um, I only sort of you know look back at that and realize how important that was for me and I I've dealt with a lot of loss and trauma and grief. So I went through miscarriages, um, lots of intrusive procedures, lots of medical appointments, and just felt very, very disillusioned and came to a point where I was told that really the only chance for me to have another child was to go through IVF. 
So I've got polycystic ovarian syndrome, uh, which a lot of women do. And um, I'd always known that my fertility might be compromised, but because I'd fallen pregnant so easily with my son, I wasn't prepared for this journey um, that unfolded. Do you please repeat what you what syndrome you had again? Polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS okay. as it's okay. as it's referred to. Yeah, and it affects a lot of women and some people have symptoms and some people don't, and some people's fertility is affected and some, you know, aren't. Um, but it affects your hormones. So it affects every aspect of, of your life. You know, it yeah. affects people's weight, hormone levels, um, mood, um, so many different things. So it's something that there isn't a cure for, but you manage it. So you manage yeah. the symptoms. Um, so, yeah, so I went over to Norway, actually, to have treatment. I'd become a bit disillusioned with the care that I was having in the UK and wanted to take the stress out of the process. Um, so went over to Norway, tried to make a holiday of that, you know, situation and it became anything but. Oh, no. So, yeah, my body just basically reacted to the drugs and very slowly um, everything started to shut down and stop working. And I ended up in intensive care. Oh, wow. Um, in Norway. In Norway. So I'm not even in the UK, you know, where I was living, I was, you know, overseas. And that was a little bit challenging, you know, that English is very good, but there's still that language barrier and you're still in a foreign country and you're not knowing how long you're going to be there. So I said goodbye to my three-year-old son um, because he went back to the UK with his grandma mm -hmm. and I didn't know whether I would ever see him again. And I think that was a really pivotal moment in my life where I questioned, you know, like this was an elective procedure. What have I done? So there was a lot of shame around that and a lot of questioning of self. You know, have I been selfish that I wanted to have another child and now my only child might grow up without his mum? The doctors couldn't do anything to treat, um, to you know, to stop my deterioration. They could only treat each symptom as it arose. So just in terms of what I physically experienced, um, I put on about 20 kilograms of fluid. Um, I couldn't breathe. I had fluid on my lungs. I had an enlarged heart. I was bed bound. Um, my kidneys stopped working. And everything just slowly, just the pain was excruciating. I cannot even put into words how excruciating the pain was. There were lots of undignified procedures and um, intrusive tests, and it was very, very confronting. I had a moment where I lay in bed and I thought to myself, if this is my, my last moment, have I lived my best life? And the answer was no. I had allowed fear to stop me from doing what I really wanted to do with my life. I, in my heart, I knew I wanted to leave the corporate world. I knew I wanted to work for myself, but I allowed fear to stop me. And I, I made a promise and I did a deal with the universe. And I said, if, if you give me a second chance, if you bless me with a second chance, I will spend the rest of my life walking towards my fears, being my best version, serving, which is really important. And and living my truth and helping others to do the same. And from that point onwards, I think something just shifted and my relationship with, with self changed. And obviously I did recover because I'm here to tell my story. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> yeah. So um, I then went back to the UK, finally recovered, went back to the UK, um, went back to work and um, also then returned to Norway to have a frozen embryo transfer. So that was really my only chance now to have a baby. And um, I was told I could never go through IVF again because it would kill me. Mm. And yeah, fortunately I had 10 frozen embryos. So I went back to Norway, fell pregnant with twins, um, was so over the moon. I was like, wow, this is why, this is why it happened. I was supposed to have twins. How romantic and beautiful. And, you know, I'm sure the reality is very different, but, you know, yep. I, was, <laughs> I was excited. I mean, there are moments. <laughs> exactly. And, yeah, and then I uh, unfortunately miscarried one twin and then the other one. And I thought my journey had really come to an end. I think at that point I was like, is this really going to work? Success rates for frozen embryos weren't very good. Hmm. 
during all of that, I decided to start a new life and um, faced my fears and moved over to Australia. And so what was, what was uh, the, uh, the catalyst that had you thinking you wanted to go to Australia and move a halfway across the world? So f- about five years prior, I'd gone over to um, Australia traveling. And I've done a lot of traveling. I've been around a lot of the world. I haven't really explored um, America and Canada. That's on my to-do list. And now I've got so many mm-hmm. friends over there. I'll definitely be coming. Well, let me um, know. But, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I don't know. When I came to Melbourne, it was the first place that I cried, actually. I didn't want to leave. I felt like I was coming home. It was a really sort of like, it felt almost like a, a past life pool or something there was you know a soul connection it was very very deep and so we'd always talked about moving over here but it was never I guess a priority it was something that was going to happen through a work secondment or when the opportunity came up whereas I then wanted to reframe it and say look you know life is short so mm-hmm. let's let's do this and we actually left in the middle of the recession in the UK so it wasn't a good time if it hadn't have worked out we had no backup plan we had about yeah. six months worth of savings and uh, no jobs to come to either of us and just blind trust and faith that I was being led in the right direction. So yeah, that's, that's quite the acrobatic uh, to put into a circus, uh, you know, a circus analogy. That's definitely walking uh, high and tight, high and tight without a rope or without a net underneath you. Absolutely. It felt really scary, but I think, I just came back to some of the principles that I'd learned. I'd been learning meditation and mindfulness and just kept trying to be very present in each moment and and listening to that first feeling of, is this excitement and this is a yes? Or am I listening to the next feeling, which is a no, which is then the fear and that's my ego. So even though I didn't have all the answers and I didn't know how it was all going to play out, if I got an excited, yes, this feels right, even if the next 10 sort of mental uh, things going in my mind were no, 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 what about this? And what about that? And all the self-sabotage and all the criticism and, you know, all of that, if that was leading me, I learned to bring it back to, no, keep trusting, keep believing, keep following your intuition and your, and your heart, not your head. So I went on that journey of learning to listen to my heart and not my head, which was hard because I'm really analytical. So yeah. Yeah, that is really tricky when you when you go by facts and figures and you you you're, like you said you're analytical to say you know what I feel like I want to do this and the rest of your body is saying the data doesn't match please don't <laughs> but obviously something worked out in your favor because you've been there ever since been there ever since and within six weeks of being in Melbourne I felt pregnant naturally with my daughter who awesome. is now 11. And then four years later, I had my seven-year-old daughter. So, so incredibly blessed. And um, they are my greatest teachers and my biggest blessings in life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we, I think we sometimes discount kids in terms of what they give us in terms of being teachers, because we, we've, lived all our, we've lived all our life and we know all this knowledge and we should be telling them how to live life, but instead they really do inspire and instill so much knowledge within, you know, within us, sometimes at the uh, awkward, uh, awkward moment, but uh, (laughs) you know, it's, you know, that, you know, life is all about experiences. So you got to take what you can. Yes, so true. Yes, there's certainly sometimes that I'm like, I know you're right, but I don't want you to be right. But yeah. (laughs) Do I really sound like that? I know. Yeah. So, so once, you know, you've established yourself in Melbourne and yeah. you've taken this shift, you said you started going into medic meditation, what, you know, what were you doing professionally? So at that point, um, I was, because I'd had every pregnancy I'd had, even including the ones that I'd lost had been really difficult. Mm-hmm. And in reality, I was six weeks into the country. Nobody was going to employ me. When I was pregnant, that's a reality. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I decided, you know, I'm never going to go back into the corporate world. I'm going to use this time to 
be very present with myself, be very present with my children and do something that I love. So I'd been doing meditation for a number of years and mindfulness back in the UK and I carried on with that. But then I got a bit of a nudge from the universe to learn Reiki, so Japanese energy healing. And that was just life changing for me, knowing that our body gives us messages, tuning into yourself, um, being able to help other people to heal their trauma and get to the root cause of issues and to know that we are all capable of healing self. So I was just the channel to that. It was a beautiful process. And then from there, I was working with a spiritual mentor in America and he said to me, you know, you're a writer, you know, you've got a number of books you need to write. And I was like, yeah, I do. And he's like, well, tell me when you're ready and I'll, I'll connect you with a place that you can write articles. Uh, I said, okay, I'm ready now. Let's do it. And so back that was 2014, I wrote my first article on, it was inspired by Dr. Brené Brown about vulnerability and it was published and I wasn't expecting that. I thought they would reject a number of articles before I was successful. And the irony was not lost on me. I was very, very vulnerable when that came out. I was like, oh no, okay. It's one thing writing for yourself, another putting it out to the world. Yep. And it just really went from there. I, I realized that I did have a number of books inside me that, the written word is very powerful to connect with other people because you hear those messages in your own voice. So you don't have the distractions of somebody's accent or what they look like or their mannerisms. Um, and that led me then into coaching, which was a natural progression of what I'd done in, in HR. I'd worked for large multinational organisations in the UK, like Wells Royce and Airbus, the plane manufacturer, and worked with senior management and coached them and their teams. So it was a natural transition for me to do that. And then um, I also then sort of fell into, into speaking more recently. And that's, if I, if somebody had told me that I was going to become a speaker, I would have laughed because I was that child at school that didn't even want to answer a question in class. Mm -hmm. So it's not my natural place of comfort. And yeah. I say that and I share that with people because sometimes those things that bring us the most discomfort are the things we need to look at the most and the things that we need to walk towards and embrace. So how many stages have you spoke on so far? Well, I haven't stood on an official stage in, you know, in, in life because Melbourne yep. has been in lockdown for the past two years. Yeah. So that's what I'm putting out to the universe um, to do that this year. Um, now that restrictions are starting to lift. But I've done a lot of speaking panels and podcasts and interviews and also interviewed people myself. So, you know, I'm, I'm building up to that. I did the, the speakers boot camp that we both on yep. last weekend. And that was pretty cool to speak in, in front of, you know, a large number of people. So it's a process. And I think, you know, and I know you're, you're applying for your TED talk, which I'm going to be excited to see. And I'm putting it out to the universe to do the same. So I've been through that training and I hope that I can share my story on that stage. So that's my big vision and my big goal. Yes, I, I'm really excited to hear how you do on your quest as well. And so please, you know, keep me informed because I definitely want to be there to cheer you on. Thank so, you. so beside, you know, you said uh, before the speaking, you're talking about the writing and Ever since that first article, you have kept writing, and now I believe you do have a book coming out, correct? I do. So I'm a co-author in Business Life in the Universe, Volume 3, mm -hmm. and I loved being part of that process. Same and here? Yeah. My so scripture, we call, we're, you're my scripture sister. Exactly. Yeah, so, yeah, so she, right here. Yay. We're in the same one, yay. Yes. <laughs> I've got mine behind me. Can you see behind me? Uh, um, yes. I've, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, so I did that. And and that was my introduction to sharing, starting to share my story with the world. And that was really exciting. And I am, have been writing my own story for a number of years. And I'm very excited that I have a publisher for that now. And so my book is called Infertility Saved My Life, Healing PCOS from the Inside Out. So mm -hmm. the title has now been agreed. We're working on the front cover and I'm hoping to have books in my hands in May and then the official launch with 
um, books in bookstores will be December. And it's really a, the first part of the book is, is my story. I'm sharing, you know, no holes barred, very vulnerable, what I went through, my journey to have my children. And then the second part is the wisdom, the insight, the techniques, the tools that kept me sane through that process and got me to where I am today. And I really want people who are going through that journey of infertility and, and struggling to have a child to understand that our mind body spirit connection is such a pivotal part of that journey it isn't just a physical journey you know if our mind is out of balance or our spirit is is out of balance then we're going to find that harder so I learned that the hard way and I really want to help other people to 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 go through that journey with more ease and grace because it's a really hard journey and it impacts so many people and there's so much silence and stigma surrounding infertility. Um, it's such a personal subject. I, I really applaud you for taking this on, Sarah, because I know that for me also that that need to share our messages so someone else doesn't have to go through the trials and tribulations that we did is you know, one of the driving factors of why I do what I do. And so I really applaud you taking that on. Where can people find your book when it's finally out? Oh, it's going to be everywhere. It will be um, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, um, you know, bookstores all around the world, uh, on my own website. Um, I'll be selling it at events um, and things that I do online. So it will, it will be everywhere. That's why I wanted to go with a publisher so that I have that global distribution Mm -hmm. and um we'll also be seeking to try and get that translated into other languages so it won't just be available in in english um hopefully we'll be able to to get that translated for people in europe and, and elsewhere asia and um, other places so very exciting yeah it definitely is but it say if someone wants to reach out to you without having the book first how could they reach out to you they can reach out to me via my website. That's probably the first place to connect with me. So that's sarahwillaby.com.au. I'm also on LinkedIn. So Sarah Willoughby 2019. Facebook, Sarah Willoughby Australia. And Instagram, Sarah Willoughby Australia. So if you search for my name, basically you will find me. And I love connecting with people and, um, and supporting people and empowering people to make positive change in their lives. I have definitely noticed that because you reach out to me and others in our various social circles. I greatly appreciate that. Uh, and yeah, thank you. I, I appreciate everything that you do and, and you sharing your message. I've, you know, I'm inspired to, to follow your journey and, and hear more about what you're up to. So well, thank you. So besides the book, what else do you have to look forward to in, in, the, in the coming weeks and months? So I'm on what the bleep in next month in March so I'm going to be talking about um spiritual uh no what's our shadow uh shadow and ego we're talking about shadow and ego and our spiritual gifts um so that's going to be exciting to be on that panel and and have a real sort of deep dive into understanding other people's perspectives and to try and take the mysticism out of spirituality because I think we there's a perception around what it is and for for me it is so far removed from the woo-woo it's it's just part of who I am in my life um I'm also going to be very much focused on my book I'm doing lots of coaching with clients so I do transformation coaching so I also I do coach people through infertility but I, I work as a transformation coach so supporting those people uh writing lots more articles so just doing more of what I love and I feel really lucky to be able to, to do this and not actually feel like it's work. I feel like somebody's going to find out eventually and say, she's not working. Let's, yep, you know, yep. Get, get back to the store. Exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. no, it, that is that is the dream to do what you love and have it not feel like work. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure you feel the same. I, I'm getting there. I'm definitely getting there. When I'm speaking and I'm reaching out to people, I, I really enjoy it. I feel like that's where I want to be. So, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, you've gone through an a, 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 a amazing journey. I can't, I'm so amazed I can't even talk. And throughout it, though, I'm sure you've maybe found something that really struck you as surprisingly 
amazing or something that you were grateful for that you, you would never have thought of being grateful for? What is, you know, what would that be for you? I'm, I'm grateful for a number of things. Through my journey, I've really connected with nature. Nature is so incredibly healing. And I've always been connected to nature, but didn't really realize that. Mm -hmm. So I have such gratitude that I live in a beautiful country with nature on my doorstep, with a number of beaches within five minutes drive. And particularly during COVID, when we, we had the longest and harshest lockdown in the world here in Melbourne, it was pretty intense. And we couldn't go further than five kilometers for many, 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 many months. Wow. So I spent a lot of time doing my, we were allowed out for one hour so I could go and do my one hour walk and I would go and walk on the, on the beach and watch sunsets. Mm -hmm. I, have such, uh, I have such gratitude for that space, that time, that possibility to do that. And I really encourage anybody who's listening to connect with nature because it enables us to be, not do, it enables us to connect with our heart, with our intuition to get out of our head, to um, really just be still and to hear the messages because we have all the messages that we need inside us to help us to get through life. But we don't necessarily always listen because we're so distracted. The other thing that I'm really grateful for is my, my difficult journey to becoming a mum because I don't take my children for granted. I look at them every day and... I'm not saying that parenting isn't challenging because it is. Yep. It really is. And I have days when I'm like, geez, why did I do this three times? <laughs> but I have such gratitude for my children and for the difficult journey because without them, I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't be being my best version and I wouldn't be on this path. So I, I really just want to emphasize that our our crises, our darkest moments can often be our biggest blessing in disguise. And I've learned that again, the hard way, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, I, for one, can definitely appreciate that. And I greatly thank you for sharing that. So Sarah, I have one more question for you. What is your favorite dinosaur? My favorite dinosaur, when I read this question, I was like, does he mean like, proper dinosaur bigger <laughs> dinosaur but anyway i'm gonna go with dorothy the dinosaur from the wiggles and the reason why is because my son used to love the wiggles when we were living in the uk and when we moved out to australia we had no money we had no jobs but i booked us tickets to go and see the wiggles that was oh, our wow. treat and we went up and we were in the right in the gods, you know, the seats right at the back that are the cheapest where you can vaguely see the screen. But they came, they came up into the audience and they interacted with us. And he's, he's 16 now and he was yeah. three when we went and he still remembers that. And, awesome. he's, and he used to love Dorothy the dinosaur. So I, I have gratitude for the Wiggles. They have provided a lot of fun and entertainment in our house. Well, that's fantastic. And that's quite the story too to have, be able to still have that connection and have that interaction despite the difficulties of getting those tickets in the situation you were in. So Sarah, it's been a, a blessing and an honor to finally have a conversation with you to get to know you a little better and know your journey. And so thank you so much for being here today. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me on and I love all that you're doing. So keep shining your beautiful light and I can't wait to see what you do next. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate that. So folks, if you want to reach out to Sarah, please go to the show notes. You can see her links down below. If you want to reach out to me to find out what I have to say about the attitude of gratitude or just you want to start up a conversation, you go to chrisdtgordon.com. You can find my information there or again in the show notes. But no matter what you do, folks, please help me share these messages of trial and tribulation. Subscribe, like, spread the word, because we all can make the world a better place by sharing these inspirational and motivational messages. All right. As I said before, thank you so much for being here with me. Please have a fantastic day. And remember, the pass on perfection 
and go for greatness.